Today I'm going to show you how you can work with Qmixes and Cubase Pro to produce the best monitor mix possible for the musician you are recording with. Hey, what's going on? Chris Selim here from Mixdown Online. Now, before we jump in, if you want to improve your mixing workflow, I'm going to encourage you to download my free mini course on how to build the perfect mix template. In that free mini course, I share with you how I built my own mixing template that I use all the time when mixing a new song. And I also give you a free Cubase mix template session for you to download again entirely free. And that is not only for Cubase Pro, other versions of Cubase are also so support it. So check it out. The link is down below. Okay, now let's jump in Cubase and talk about Qmixes. Okay, so now the first thing I'm going to do here, I am going to open the control room because the Qmixes work with the control room active. If you don't have the control room active, you know, just activate it and start working with the control room. Now I'm going to leave a link on top on uh, the video that I've made on the control room itself. It's a powerful feature. It's like one of my favorite feature that we have in Cubase Pro. So if you want to know how to activate the control room, click on F4 to open up the audio connections uh, window and uh, make sure control room is active. You know, on the top right, you will see the control room tab and just make sure to activate it and that will open this window. Now, if, again, if you want to know more about the control room, check out the other video. Okay, now I'm going to make sure that I have a Q uh, mix that is active. Now, I already have one right now. If you want to add more or you want to add your first Q mix, you just need to click on Add Channel and you will have all the Q mixes available for you to, um, to create. In my case, I have three more available Q mixes. That's because I already have one in my session. And there's a total of four Q mixes that you can load. So that means four stereo mixes that you can send out for musicians that you are working with in the studio, which is actually very nice. Now, once you have a Q mix created, what you need to do is to route it to an output out of your interface. In my case, uh, mine is going into output three and four out of my uh, sound interface. And then from my sound interface, output three and four are going straight into my recording room in a headphone amplifier so the uh, the singer or the musician I work with can listen to a mix straight from a pair of headphones. That's simple. So now in Cubase, what I need to do is to open the right zone to get access to the control room. On the top, I'm going to get Q1, the Q1 tab, which is the Q1 that was created straight in audio connections. Um, and then I'm going to make sure I activate this Q1. Now, my goal is to send some audio into that Q1 that goes straight into the musician's headphone. So what I do to make things simple, I work out of the mix console. So I'm going to go straight on the racks on top and I'm going to activate or check on Q Sense. And that will add a tab straight on the mix console. It's going to be called Qs. So you see all of those Q1 levels. This is how you can send a signal. So basically what you need to do is to work out a mix to send to the musician you are working with, to send to Q1 basically. Basically. So, for example, if I want to send some kick and snare uh, on Q1, I just activate uh, uh, Q1 straight on the mix console and I can play around with the level. Okay, so this is basically how you can do this. And there's two ways you can send a signal over to Q1 or to any cues is to send a signal pre or post fader. Right now, by default, um, Q mixes are set up to be sent post fader. So that means that the level of the fader will affect the amount of signal going into the queue, okay, on top of uh, the level that I also have right here, okay, the queue level. So queue level is going to is going to affect the signal and also the fader level. Now, what I like to do is to send a signal pre-fader, okay, so before it hits the fader. So in that case, what that is going to do, it's like the, the, the main fader of the channel is not going to do whatsoever. It's not going to play around with the level that I'm sending into Q1. So only the Q level is going to influence the amount of signal sent to the cues. Okay, so uh, this is how I like to work. So everything in uh, pre-fader. So the goal is to just build up a mix for uh, the, the musician you work with. But that can actually be very long. It could be a very long process if you do this like, you know, one at a time. Or you can say like, you know, select a bunch of tracks all together, make sure a quick link is active, and you activate your cues. 
and you can go from there, you know, bring that pre or post fader and uh, just, you know, try to start to, to, to tweak around and work out the mix. But even then, that can take a long time. So the cool thing about Cubase is that we have a very nice option to set that up. So let's say I have, like this session is actually a very huge session. It's still in production and in recording, in the recording phase. So I still have some recording to do with a lead singer and also a cello player. Um, but there's a bunch of tracks already uh, recorded on this song. So what I need to do is to prepare a very good mix you know, for the singer or the cello player, just to send like the correct mix, a very nice balanced mix. So what I'm gonna do, since I already have a kind of a rough mix going on in my session, I can actually go on the Q tab, the Q1 tab on top, on a, straight from the control room, right click and click on from selected mixer channel. And then look at this, use current mix level. So what I'm gonna do first though, I'm gonna need to select all the channels that I wanna send to, um, to Q1 and I'm gonna use the same mix that I have right here in my session. So let me select all the channels that I have, and then I'm gonna show you other options you can also do. So first I'm gonna select all of my channels that I wanna send out. Um, so there you go. So these channels I wanna send over to Q1, so I'm gonna right click and click on From Selected Mixer Channels and click on use current mix level. So that will set up all Q levels to the same level as the fader levels, which is very powerful. Then I'm gonna go back on Q1 and right click again. And this time around, I'm gonna do the same for pan. So use current pan settings. And that will do the same for the panning of all channels. Because you can set up the panning on each Q sends also, uh, which is quite nice. Then since all of my channels are still selected, I'm just gonna activate Q1 out of these channels. And that's it, let's have a listen, okay? I'm just gonna put on my headphones. And uh, what I'm gonna do here, if I go down uh, the uh, control room, um, I have uh, the uh, the source monitor mix, which is usually what I use to listen to my mix, but I can also monitor C1, which is the Q1. So this is a very good way to monitor the mix you are sending out to the musician you work with. Now, in our situation for this video, you are the musician, okay? Or I am the musician also. Uh, so I'm gonna click on C1, and what you are gonna hear in the video is the actual C1 one or Q1 mix. So let's have a quick listen. Perfect, so now we have something going on. The mix sounds pretty much balanced. And at this point, it's just a matter of balancing the music with the playback signal of the musician. Um, so what I'm gonna do next, okay? I'm gonna show you another way that I like to work with. Okay, so let's say I'm working with a lead singer. I have this audio channel that I'm gonna use to record the singer. Um, so my routing is already done. And I'm also gonna activate Q1 on this channel uh, so the, uh, the singer can actually hear himself. So let's try this one out. I'm gonna activate monitor and there you go. Okay, so now I have a Q1 activated and this is the, uh, the microphone that is plugged into this channel. And uh, this is the signal that I am sending over to Q1. One, two, I'm not gonna say. All right, so at this point on, it's just a matter of making the right balance. Okay, I'm just gonna turn this one off. But now the way everything is set up right now is not super practical and can take a long time to adjust the levels correctly. So what I like to do, you know, instead of sending out like the full mix to, uh, to Q1, um, I actually create myself, like, and this is a habit that I also have when, when mixing, I do the same when recording. Um, I have um, instrument buses. So I have one bus for drums, bass, Bass, guitars and keyboards, vocals and so on. Um, so this is an option that I can use instead of sending a signal off of the uh, of all these single channels in the session. I can actually send uh, the signal out of instrument channels instead, and that is going to be way faster. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to select again all those channels um, that I worked with before and uh, we are going to clear them out okay in one uh, in one shot so i'm going to select them all right click again on the q1 tab and then reset q sense 
I'm going to reset everything, and I'm not going to use the Q sends out of each channel in the session. What I'm going to do instead is to use uh, the Q sends out of these instrument channels. And this is an option that we can use. And that's it. So let's have a listen. So this way, if I want to bring down the full mix, I can just bring down all the Q mixes all together by selecting them all and making sure Q link is selected. So this way I can balance that out very easily. So you get the idea. So if the singer or the musician tells you that the drums are too loud, for example, you can just bring down the drums. So it makes it very fast to tweak out the full mix for uh, the cue sand, okay? So this is a very cool way to do it. You can also bring those out and use a music, like in my case, I have a music group, which is uh, uh, which are all those channels, all the instrument channels going into the music group channel and this is the one that i am sending out to q1 and i keep the vocals in this case since i'm working with a vocalist i'm going to keep the group channel like the vocal group channel separately and send that signal over to q1 separately so i only have in this case three q mixes to deal with um, the one from vocals the one from the full music and full mix and also the one that comes from the lead singer's channel so very easy if you just need to turn down the music in the uh, uh the, the musician's monitor mix you just bring down the q mix of that one group channel and that's it. That's the only thing you need to do. In reality, if you already have a good uh, rough mix going on, um, the singer or the musician, um, they're going to focus mainly on their instrument and the mix in general, but mainly the instrument they are playing, you know. So if it's a, a vocalist, the vocalist is going to focus on his voice only and not on the drums or the bass or the level of the keyboards, you know, so they actually don't care much about that. As far as they can hear the mix in general, they're good to go. They're always going to ask you to bring up or down their own vocal. Okay, so that's the reality. So that's why when I record vocals or a guitar player, I, you know, like any instruments for that matter, I'm mainly going to do like a rough mix straight out of a group channel and work with only one Q sense. So this way I only have to deal with a couple of cue sends to work with and that's it and if for example you're working on recording a full band and you're using all four Q mixes available in Cubase, uh, you can just use all instrument uh, uh, group channels. So for example, if the drummer wants to hear the bass louder, in this case, you just increase the level of the bass for the drummer only, and same for the guitarist. If you, he wants to hear less drums, you just bring down the, the drums in his, uh, in his uh, Q mix, and that's it. You know, So very, very simple and very easy to work with when you do it this way, instead of sending out like the full mix of every channel's uh, straight into a sand, into a Q-sand, uh, which can be time wasting and confusing at some point. So this is the way I like to work when it comes to Q-mixes in Cubase. Now, something else that I want to show you that is also part of Q-mixes is that you can also send out a metronome on any cues that you have active in your session. So uh, let's try this one out. So I have my click active in my session and it is also active straight into the uh, control room. So what I can do on top, I also can activate the uh, metronome straight on Q1. So every cue will have its own metronome uh, that you can activate or deactivate. And you also have a pan and a level. So let's have a listen. All right, and the cool thing also is you have the talkback option. And I love working with the talkback from Cubase, and this is what I usually do in my case. And the talkback is right here at the bottom. So if you want to set this up, click on F4 again. Let's go back to audio connections and back on the control room tab. And you also can add a channel called uh, talk back now it's not there at the moment because it's already into my list here because i already created that uh, that channel and you just route this out into an input out of your interface where you have a 
microphone plugged in. In my case, I have this microphone as a talkback mic plugged into uh, mic input number three. And uh, if I click on talkback, this, oh, there you go. Now I have some, uh, uh, some signal going into Q1. So the talkback signal. Uh, so basically it is right there on top. So you need to make sure that TB, which uh, stands for talkback is active. And uh, you have the talkback levels. Uh, now the cool thing that you can also do, and this is what I also do on my side, is to set up a key command to activate and deactivate the talkback. So mine is F19, very simple to set up. Just go to edit, go down to uh, key commands and look for talk back if you would search for talk back and it's going to be under control room if i'm not mistaken and there you go talk back on and off this is the command you need to set yourself on your keyboard so uh, mine is set up to f19 and that's it so this is very practical when i work with someone i just need to click on f19 if i want to talk to him and that's it so i already always have a microphone near me and this is how I activate TalkBack in my case. So there you go, my friends. This is how you can work with QMixes in Cubase Pro and set up a very cool and nice balanced monitor mix to the musician you are working with and recording with. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave everything down below. And don't forget to share and to like if you enjoyed this video and to subscribe to the channel if you're new here and also if you're not subscribed yet and you've been watching my videos for quite a while just subscribe and click that notification bell until next time take care and see you